All right, looks like it's about that time to get started. Um, all right, so be with me for the next 30 minutes here. Uh, I'm gonna try to play with fire here and do some live demos, because that nothing could possibly go wrong with that, with conference Wi-Fi. Um, so Caleb Washburn, uh, this presentation's on uh, Tired of the Onboarding Toil. Um, this is a presentation around a, uh, using CF management. Um, it is a framework that I created uh, based on my experiences in the field, helping customers deliver uh, solutions based on Cloud Foundry. Um, just kind of for awareness here, uh, who has actually heard of CF management besides being in the, the conference presentation title? Yeah, got a few people. How many people have actually used it with customers? Yeah, about half, all right, so good. All right, so why CF management? What was the reason behind this? Um, there was a desire to have a declarative way to define uh, basically any of the entities in your Cloud Foundry system, whether that's orgs, spaces, users, and just any other entity, quotas, marketplace availability, et cetera, um, wanting to really have the ability to do uh, essentially infrastructure as code, source controlled configuration versus when you're managing multiple foundations, having to compare and contrast what features are available, um, what entities are there with those orgs and spaces and users, and, and really just trying to get your hands around that. There's actually a gap in the product when I created this, and that gap still exists, um, where you're unable to map LDAP groups to org and space roles. Um, that's really the, the, the major motivator um, when I created this, was working with a customer um, that uh, really wanted the ability to be able to onboard users by having defined LDAP groups created, and then synchronize those user mappings into org and space roles versus consistently hammering out CF um, CFCLI commands to add users with space role or space developer role, et cetera. Um, again, talked a little bit about this, having a versioned and auditable representation of your configuration, because things go wrong. Um, you want to maybe be able to rebuild your foundation with the same configuration without maybe having a backup to do so. Want to be able to see why did certain things change in your ecosystem? Who created this org? Why did this org exist? Who added permissions for this user uh, to this org? Having this, the, this uh, source code managed configuration be the master of that um, versus having to filter through any number of logs in Cloud Foundry and uh, try to figure out how did, this, how did this thing exist and why is it there? And then ultimately, at the end of the day, tired of the toil of you know, whipping out the CFCLI and remembering all the commands with all the options um, and wanting to have really a declarative, pragmatic way of doing this. So here's kind of the overview for, for those of you, and I'll kind of brush through some of this pretty quickly. Um, so essentially there's some manual things you have to do if you're gonna onboard uh, using various different tools, whether that's UAA, the CFCLI, going into Apps Manager itself if you're um, using Pivotal Cloud Foundry. Um, that's you know installing lots of, um, some of these CLIs are Ruby-based. That, that presents some fun depending on your platform that you're working on. Um, being able to add users, um, add membership of users using the UAA command line. Uh, the CFCLI now has the ability to create certain users with uh, origin definition, which was a newer feature that was not there when I first started creating some of this. Um, again, and then once you've got uh, org and space, you need to be able to see if create the user, set the org role, set the space role, create the org, create the space. Lots of different things that are, uh, again, not hard, um, but, you know, toil. Um, at the end of the day, uh, as, a, as a team that is operating this platform, we want to focus on the business value, not necessarily hammering out a bunch of command line arguments to create orgs and spaces all the time. I wanted to prevent this, provide this in a way that could be a little bit self-service. So automated, more automated onboarding with CF management um, is really taking that manual process and really trying to codify it. Um, so again, having a definitive source of truth um, for each of your foundations, and that's, um, we, want to, we want to use a, a, a tool that, again, is auditable, is, um, has history, and we, we like Git. Um, so we decided that uh, we can use a Git repository or any other source code management repository, for that matter, to store your configuration. Uh, that configuration is, um, it, this is Cloud Foundry, so it's got to be in YAML. Um, so, because that's, you know, everything's got to be a YAML in uh, the Cloud Foundry ecosystem. Um, so, essentially being able to declare that, declare your orgs and your spaces, um, and check that in. Uh, there is, uh, essentially there's a CLI for all this, but um, we ship with a concourse pipeline as well, so that you can 
um, leverage concourse um, in a system um, uh, to, to drive and, and declare this configuration and apply the configuration for you. So what is it? Um, CF, CF management is currently released on GitHub. Um, there's a GitHub releases uh, section. Um, it's actually broken into two distinctive pieces. Um, the original piece of this is just the CF management CLI, which is the second piece. Um, it is for applying that configuration to your Cloud Foundry, um, and all it leverages at the end of the day is the Cloud, cl cloud Controller APIs as well as UAA APIs to orchestrate certain behaviors in an idempotent way. Um, so that anything that you've got added to your Cloud Foundry can be managed with CF management. Um, it came along that there was a desire that um, hand editing YAML files is tedious. It is something that is error prone. Um, so provided a CF management config, um, CLI, to help you automate some of, of the authoring of this configuration. Um, got a few users that have stuck the CF management config API, or uh, CLI, behind, uh, a, behind a web UI to make this a little bit simpler. Um, wasn't planning to provide a, a, a GUI experience for this other than the CLI, but there's some desire to do that in CF management. The config of that allows you to do it. We also released this um, on Docker Hub so that it can be uh, uh, consumed via concourse fairly easily as well. Um, and that really just contains the, the Linux CLI um, that can be used in, in any of your concourse pipelines or if you're consuming it for Docker for other reasons. So how do you get started with uh, CF management? There's really uh, two different ways that you can do that. Um, you can use the CF management CLI and you can just say initialize my configuration. It will bootstrap you and create a, a configuration folder um, that has a bunch of um, YAML files that are configured um, with folders and structures and we'll, we'll dive into that here in a little bit when we do some uh, live demoing. Or you can actually, um, to, to speed up the bootstrapping process, if you've already been running Cloud Foundry, which most users that run, come across this tool have been for a while, you don't want to manually have to re in, um, reverse engineer your configuration into this YAML format. Again, that's toil, that's tedious work, so we can look at the APIs and introspect those and reverse engineer your configuration to make the bootstrapping experience much easier. So without that, it's demo time, because that's enough talking. Um, all right. so got a, a Cloud Foundry Foundation with basically nothing in it. And it helps if you type the command right. Um, so CF orgs, this is running just uh, PCF dev locally here. Hopefully everybody can see the screen. Played with the colors, but this is as good as it may get. All right. So what I want to do is um, I want to be able to reverse engineer. That is perfect if we can do that. Thank you, sir. I um, want to be able to you know, populate some stuff. Um, into this so we can represent maybe what an initial foundation would look like. So instead of manually typing out a bunch of commands, I'm just going to create a bunch of orgs, create a bunch of spaces, assign some space developers, and show you how to get started with this tool. Um, this is probably a pretty consistent experience. If you were um, you know, managing this with just a CFCLI, you would maybe write some shell scripts, something to help automate things um, and allow people to create orgs and spaces and various different things. So this is almost done because we're not going to create too many. All right, so what I want to do now is, um, just to show you there's no magic here. Um, so I've got a directory with just a bunch of shell scripts in it. I am going to end up just uh, initializing my configuration. Um, to initialize this, I'm introspecting that Cloud Foundry Foundation and generating a bunch of YAML files. So um, at the end of the day, what you're going to get is a config directory with you know, a bunch of folders. There's a configuration folder for every org, a configuration folder for every space. As you can see, you can do security group mappings. You can do space configuration, org configuration, quotas, whatnot. There's lots of different things that you can do. And we can bring that up in a little bit of a better editor so we can kind of see the structure here. And that's super tiny. Um, I don't know that I can make that any bigger. So you can see that, uh, for instance, the built-in orgs that I, or the orgs that I created, there's a space here. This is really where the meat of the information is. So it's basically you know, declaratively saying, I want to have an org. That org is named org1, because um, naming is the second hardest problem in computer science. So I just go with basic stuff. Um, space, space1. Um, users, these are the users that I mapped into there under the notion of a space developer. Um, you can see that you can use LDAP users. 
SAML users, and even LDAP groups. And then every role that, if you're familiar with Cloud Foundry, there's the space developer, space manager, space auditor, um, enabling certain feature flags, whether that's allowing SSH, um, enabling uh, CF management to manage space quotas for you, or security groups. Everything that we, we built into CF management, tried to build it in with feature flags, so you can opt into the experience at whatever level you want. Um, at the end of the day, table stakes for this is using it to manage orgs. Um, some people decide to use it just to manage the orgs and let give uh, org manager um, and space manager out to people so that they could create spaces. Some people decide to manage it completely holistically in this configuration. Really lets you opt into however you want to do that. So if I'm going to just come back here and now run CF management. So if I want to just run CF management and run the apply command, the apply command is something that is essentially um, the same thing as running the concourse pipeline. It runs the commands in the right order, which inherently that would be creating orgs before you can create spaces, creating associations um, in the right order for you. So if I run that because I just reverse engineer that, it's not really going to do too much because everything's idempotent, potent, and it's just going to go ahead and manage that configuration for you. So if I end up looking at this, I've got CF orgs. You can see I got a bunch of orgs. Um, if I wanted to go ahead and do a cleanup and wipe this thing back down to its original state um, while I'm talking through this, I can show you then how I can take CF management and replace that state back to the way that it was um, and go from there. Uh, so while that's running, we'll hop back over into the prezo here. So now, if we wanted to go ahead and um, use CF management to add orgs and spaces, this is where we, we can use the CF management config API to do that. We can either that or we can copy and paste in a text editor and edit the YAML files and, and you know, deal with an indentation and troubleshooting all that experience or provide uh, the nice wrapper here that allows you to uh, manage the configuration um, in, in an appropriate way to add orgs and spaces to your, to your environment. Adding roles. So that's the other thing. The, this Again, this is the main driver around um, why CF management was created, around the ability to map users. Orgs and spaces are created on a fairly regular basis. It's the onboarding of users and the offboarding of users that is important. Um, without a mechanism to declare that, a lot of times you'll probably have users that are left in your foundation that maybe have a, the permissions in an org or a space that they shouldn't have anymore. Um, and that's maybe not centrally managed. So moving that into an LDAP group where most enterprises have a uh, a offboarding process. They have a you know a, a someone that's managing those group membership, managing those entitlements, and there's already a built-in process. So let's not reinvent a new process. Let's just leverage the processes that are there. Again, using these uh, these commands, you can go ahead and do that, and I'll demonstrate some of that um, as we go. So now that everything's cleaned up, so if I just do CF orgs, you'll see I'm back to my initial state. Um, if I want to go ahead and run the the good old apply command, um, he's going to go through and determine what orgs and spaces are there and go ahead and create a bunch of stuff. Um, and of course, it is a live demo, so why wouldn't it fail? Um, yay! Oh, that's why. Because um, i got to create users. This is a feature of CF management that is a little bit of a pain point. Um, in the fact that uh, we don't actually automate creating internal users. Um, because internal users have this thing that we wouldn't want to put in the configuration, which is the password for the internal user. Um, so we, right now, we just error out and say, you must create these internal users first, and then we will assign them. So um, I can create user demo one with password of password, and demo two I think I had five users that I created. And five. And now we can go back, and the apply should work. It's going through assigning all these org space roles, users, everything to, um, to our Cloud Foundry in a way that allows us to quickly do this. Because all this configuration is in Git, um, the nice thing about this is I can check this configuration in. If I wanted to, I could have developers or consumers of my platform submit something that should be native to their experience, which is a pull request. Um, instead of maybe a ticket to the, the platform team to create these orgs and spaces, 
Uh, can we manage this in a collaborative way that lets me do that via um, like a pull request workflow? So I can run apply again just to make sure that there's, you know, things are right and potent, things are going to be there, um, and as this works. So again, go CF orgs, you can see all the orgs are created, um, which is kind of the, the point of moving this configuration into um, a declarative format. So the other thing that you'll notice as we get into this, um, when we reverse engineered this configuration, we have the admin user, because I created everything with the admin account. So I'm going to go ahead and use that CF management config API to remove, remove all the admins from all the spaces. Um, and then when I, so if I, before I do that, if I do CF space users, Did you mean users? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it helps if I split. Spell users right too. Yep, that's what you meant. Yep. Hey, that's how it works. Um, again, so space managers, admin, developer. If I go ahead and re since I've removed those, um, if I go ahead and rerun the apply, you can see that I de-entitled even though the admin user is a cloud controller admin, I've de-entitled de him at the cloud controller level. Um, so then, if I do see space users again, magic. The demo, the uh, admin user is gone. So this is kind of, again, still dealing with internal users um, and things of that nature. Um, so if I actually wanted to um, convert one of these orgs, uh, or one of these spaces over into use um, LDAP, because I've got a, an LDAP server running here. Um, I've got, oh, that is super tiny as well. So I've got a, you got to trust me if you can't see the screen here. So there's a space developer group that has three users that are managed in LDAP. Um, there's no users that are in LDAP. So if I look at, uh, if I show what users are in UAA right now, um, I've got a bunch of users that have a local origin of UAA, demo one, demo two, demo three. Anybody that's added LDAP users um, and tried to bind this together, uh, there used to be a sequence of UAA commands that you had to run a curl um, to create users with the right origin. That was super buggy and super hard to get the, the syntax right. So again, wanted to be able to create LDAP users for you. Um, so if I just want to do CF management config, and I want to do update space, and I can look at what the help is. I've um, got context sensitive help that lets me see how things work. Um, for the org, org one, and space, space one, I want to do developer LDAP group and space developers, ers, space developers. So I'll go ahead and run that. So that space has been updated. If I go look at the space configuration, you see that he's added a space developer um, LDAP group into that. And now we're going to rerun the apply command. Ideally, you know, in you know, using this more of in a production context, this would be checked in. You could have something that's listening for that check in. Um, it would then go apply those changes and make that happen. Um, now, if I run that same command. One, to show the UAA users. You can see now that I've got new users that are created with a uh, LDAP um, origin. They have the, the DN um, as the external ID or the CN as the external ID. Um, and they've got essentially their username um, that's associated with that. Um, if I end up running CF space users, you can see now those users have been added um, as uh, space developers. Um, if I want to actually sh you know, show the idea of deprovisioning those users, I could see come in here and simulate that as when a user gets removed from LDAP, from an LDAP group, and then I rerun if management. Oh, not that. Oh, helps if I'm on the right well window. So if I 
go ahead and run that apply, you'll see that uh, one thing that's happening is I'm removing CF Management Demo 3 user from that organ space. But because also that that user no longer has any org roles, I'm also removing that user as an org provisioned, um, org associated user. Um, so if I go back and look at CF Space users, oh. You can see demo three has been removed. Um, okay. So at this point, um, there's other features that we can kind of show you walking through this. I've um, got a few more minutes and then I'll open it up for a question. The other thing that you can see um, that is a newer feature that we added um, is around uh, service plans. This is something that came up um, that it was a, kind of a pain point from a, um, a platform team's perspective to manage. I want to add new features in the form of services to the marketplace, but maybe I don't want to expose those to every one of the users. Um, so I want to be a declarative way that I can have uh, certain features opted in, um, which is essentially the service access command. Um, so you can see right now that I've got uh, PMySQL um, that's available for you know DB large, DB medium, DB small, available to, in a limited fashion to just CF dev org and the system org. Um, if I wanted to expose this out, um, if I go into the CF management config, oh, it's at the org level. So if I want to look at org one, you can see that basically for service access here, for P, uh, MySQL, I've been granted no access. Um, so I can update this with all and rerun apply. And then if I go back and look at service access, you can you should be able to see, this is why the live demo is fun. Uh, oh, I think it might not be all. I think it might be star. Maybe not. We'll try. And this is why I should use the command uh, yeah, so it was star. Um, so if I didn't go back and look, look at service access, you can see it's been granted to that org. Um, or if I wanted to deprovision it from a given org, um, if I go back up into the CF management dev, you can see in his, he has access to small, medium, and large. I don't want to give large to anybody um, to this org, so I can reapply that config. And... He runs through all this, and if I go look at service access, you can see he's removed him from large. So a quick way that you can you know, declare which ways you want to manage service access um, and any other thing. Um, again, quotas, um, security groups are part of this um, from a management perspective. Basically anything that uh, uh, you can manage outside of an app. So service instances are not, um, but the services that are in the marketplace are. So um, with that, um, that was a quick half hour. Um, so, yeah. yeah, so what else can I manage? Again, going through that, one of the other features that we did add um, that I do want to mention is uh, got a feature request to be able to do time-based SSH access. Um, so you can actually put in that you want to enable SSH access for a space for, say, 24 hours, um, and it will uh, update your configuration and then there's a concourse job that has a timer that continuously pulls to see if that 24 hours has expired. If so, it will remove it, um, which is kind of a nice feature if you need to allow some temporary um, admin debugging or uh, debugging level at, at an application level. Um, private domains are another thing that are, um, and as well as isolation segments is something that's prevailing that we're seeing a lot of people trying to, to build out isolation segments and managing the, the configuration of that. So with that, I'll turn it over to questions, and if there's no questions here, we, I'll be out in the hall afterwards. Sure. Is there any provision for uh, managing UAA users? Uh, for managing UAA users, there is currently not a facility for creating UAA users because of the user ID password constraint. Um, it's not that we couldn't automate that process, it's just there's not, um, hasn't been a really a clear path on if I set the password, how do I get the password to the user and do we want to set the, a default password to the same for every user. Um, 
looked at maybe using like the notifications API as a way to do it, um, but nothing at this point in time. Most companies that are using this are using an external configuration, not using an internal UAA, so it hasn't really been a, a huge uh, challenge at this point. Are you talking about UAA clients? Okay. Um, nothing with UAA clients yet. That might be something, again, they would have a client secret, so we'd have to figure out a strategy to manage that as well. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Um, is there a way to get all of the LDAP users and shadow users in UAA, or do you, can you only, only do it if they're assigned uh, groups of LDAP users? Um, no, you can do them as shadow users as well. So you can define groups, or you can define LDAP users. Um, so within the configuration, um, you could actually have come in here instead of, oh, where did I have that? So instead of space developers, I could have just came in here and added uh, CF management demo five. And he would have then created that LDAP shadow user in, in, in UAA and then mapped the, the groups to that. No, so, okay, so wanting to be able to essentially mirror your whole LDAP infrastructure into UAA. Um, no, not at this point. Um, it's essentially all we're doing is only adding the users that have entitlements of space uh, within the space um, or org um, from that perspective. A user could log into the foundation and they get created as a shadow user with no permissions. And we're trying to avoid that kind of user experience where we've onboarded them first because the workflow used to be, it's just easier for you to log in and see a blank page and see no orgs and voices, and then I'll map you later because I don't want to create you in UAA first. Um, this has allowed us to avoid that, that workflow. Um, we've made a lot of optimizations in this to ensure that we're not um, with larger organizations with a lot of LDAP users and a lot of orgs and spaces. It was pretty chatty, um, some of the earlier versions. We made a lot of optimizations to short circuit the lookups, um, which helped it scale it. For larger companies, it was taking like an hour and a half to sync the LDAP structure, um, and now it's like less than five minutes that we can sync very, very large organizations. <laughs> Again, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, early on we did. Um, it was fairly um, non-performant in the way that it would look things up. It was looking everything up um, per query, per org, per space. Right now what it does is it essentially queries all the orgs and all the spaces up front and then just iterates through those in memory. Um, so there's a one-time hit to query the cloud controller and, and page through things, but instead of looking things up based on org and space individually, we were seeing a lot of uh, I.O. problems with performance. So yeah, try to try to improve that, but um, there may be scenarios where definitely uh, the way to provide feedback on this is try to, be, try to be very attentive to the issues in GitHub. Um, since this isn't really a supported product from a, like Pivotal's perspective as a company, this is more um, my side project that seems to get used on many cu customers. Um, so essentially try to be very, uh, very aware of the issues and get things updated in a pretty, pretty uh, expedient fashion. Yeah, so um, the nice thing about this is there's nothing in this configuration because uh, the system domain, the user IDs and passwords are all externalized. I um, mean, you, you provide that to the apply process. Say you were gonna deploy two foundations, you wanted to have those in an active-active uh, setup, you can use the same Git repository and then you can basically apply to both of them and synchronize the foundations so that uh, if your expectation from a consumer perspective is, if I have an org in the active, I have an org in the other active, we want to keep that in sync. There's nothing that synchronizes that natively within Cloud Foundry today because those are two distinct foundations. Uh, but we do see customers using one config repo um, that then they can manage multiple foundations in a consistent way. There's typically a different repo or different folder within the repository for managing your dev foundation versus your prod foundation. Um, but as much as you can do, it really just is pretty flexible around how do you want, what do you want the end state to be expected? Um, so if you want those to be in sync, then use one repository. Don't use separate repositories. Excuse me. Okay, we're at time, but 
I don't think anybody's beaten down the door. So if there's any other questions, otherwise I'll be out in the hall afterwards. All right.